Um, I think the only other problem, or the only other question I had was, um, was this one. So, and maybe it's not this one exactly, but there was one that asked for, like, the max vertical shear stress and then the max horizontal shear okay. stress. So how do you know the difference between those two? Is it just where you cut it? Or, like, if you would cut it this way or you cut it this way? Okay. That's another interesting question. Okay. When you are talking about the horizontal shear stress, okay, the horizontal shear stress is developed in the horizontal element. Here is how I introduce the difference between the vertical shear stress and normal, I mean, the horizontal shear stress. Okay? okay? So here we want to determine the value of shear stress at different locations, say A, B, C, and different points. So first, I want to determine shear stress at point A. So it's really simple, you know, I just need to calculate Q for I need to cut my element from this point. I need to calculate Q for all area above that. Okay, so I calculate Q for that. I calculate the thickness would be whatever it is. It's 8 millimeter, And the V and I, they are constant. Remember mm -hmm. these two, it's very important. The shear force and moment of inertia is constant always for a, for a certain section. The only parameter that is changing is Q and mm -hmm. now. If I want to go and calculate the value of at point B and C, I'm using the same procedure. The only thing that is changing is the value of Q and the value of T, which is in this problem is the same because the thickness of the flange is the same. But in all these three points, I'm calculating the vertical shear stress. Okay, shear stress is actually going downward. Okay, and is that because this rectangle is vertical? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now, let me talk about another point. F okay. is in the horizontal element. In the horizontal element, I have horizontal shear stress. Okay? Okay. So in that case, how can I cut my element? You know, in the previous cases, I cut it horizontally. Like this. Okay. Okay. But in this case, if I cut it horizontally, you can see the thickness would be a very large. So that would be 220 millimeter. Mm -hmm. That gives me a very small value of shear. But that is not critical okay. for me. So what should I do? Okay. I need to cut it vertically. That has lower thickness. That's more critical in this case. Okay. Okay. And here, if I cut it in that way, that would be the thickness that I have and shear stress would be in horizontal direction. So, okay. what is Q? Look at this figure. You know, if I enlarge that, we can see the Q, you know, when I cut that, I have to calculate Q for the free part, which is shown here, which is shown here by yellow uh, color, and I have to calculate the value of Q for that area, and the thickness would be the thickness of flange, which in this case is, again, 8 millimeter. Mm -hmm. Okay, but remember that is in the horizontal direction. The same is true for point, what is that, E. For point E, I'm considering this part. But there is one thing that I should be aware of, and that is, what is the difference between calculating shear stress at D and E? D is in the vertical element. So how do I okay. cut my element? So I cut it horizontally. And what is the area that I have to consider here? I would say the part above. Yeah, the entire D. top part or entire bottom part. They should give you the same number. Okay. Okay, so that's why I consider the entire bottom part. It is the Q of this is exactly equivalent to the Q of the flange. So it wouldn't matter if I did the, the top bottom part, part or the that's top okay. part? That's okay. 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 But remember, this is where I'm calculating the value of shear stress in the web, in the vertical element. Now, look at the procedure of calculating the value of shear stress at E. E is in the horizontal element, it's in the mm -hmm. flange. So how can I cut my section? Like this. So I will cut that section right where the flange and the web are connecting together. Okay. So I will cut it in that way. So what is the area of Q here? That would be um, just half, half of the flange. Half of 220 times okay. um, 8. The centroid of, yeah, two, half of 220 times just 8, that area. gives you area, and I need to multiply that by the distance of that subsection to the central intersection. Okay. 
So this is how we can calculate, how we can understand differences between the vertical and shear. Okay. If you get back to that problem, does that make sense for, to you? So you mean, um, for like this, he's asking the maximum shear stress in any locations in uh -huh. the just which size both sides are equal? Yes, oh, both sides are equal to each other. So and because in that problem, we are talking about the maximum shear stress everywhere that is always at the centroid. And the centroid has a vertical element, so that I'm talking about the vertical shear stress at that point. And also the same for this one. Right. So you can, the upper side and the bottom side, yes. give it the same cube. Yes, exactly. And max is at the centroid. Max is always okay. at the centroid. So now look at this problem. It makes so much more sense. So for this problem, I want to determine the value of. Um, Shear stress maximum to horizontal stress at point B and A. So point B is located in the horizontal element. So where should I cut my element? I should cut it in that way, mm -hmm. and I consider Q for that area. What is the same is true for A? I would consider that part, and I would consider this hatched area. For so a. why would you not cut it right here? Okay, and that not is not. Half of it. Um, I don't want to make you more confused. So just. Give is get it as an advice. We okay. cut it right when the flange is connecting to the web. Okay. Okay. I'll just do that. <laughs> okay. Okay. And what should I do for H? H is a vertical element, so I cut it in that direction horizontally, okay. and I will consider the Q for all portion either on the top or on the bottom of that. Okay. So for part B, the reason why we don't use this area is just because they asked for horizontal so you need to do this area for this part or B yes okay mm -hmm. and then for part A they asked for point H so obviously mm -hmm. you do that mm -hmm. okay great I'm so much less confused <laughs> okay um, I think that's all I have